In this tutorial, we'll go over the basic user interface for Motion Builder 2015. So if we launch Motion Builder, uh, first we get licenses and other information. Depending on whether or not you've turned off this show, this at startup, you should get this one minute startup movies um, window offering you one minute startup movies. If you click on watch the movie, most likely you'll just get a window which will have some audio, but it won't have a video. That's because this computer doesn't have QuickTime installed. If you've installed QuickTime on your computer, then you should be able to get a video which will go over a number of things we're about to cover. But, uh, just so you don't have to use those videos, I'm going to cover everything that's in these videos plus a couple more bits. So this is the basic Motion Builder uh, layout. If for some reason you have a different layout, um, you can always come up here to Window, uh, sorry, Layout, <clears throat> and you've got three different choices. So you can switch to Scripting Layout, which you'll see how it's a different layout than this, or we can go back to Editing. And right now we'll be working with the Editing Layout. Um, before we can really go through much of this, uh, we'll need to load some kind of models into this. So if we just go to Tutorials, and we'll find Pepe mocap, and we'll drag Pepe into the viewer. This is called the viewer. And whenever we bring any new <coughs> uh, film box uh, file, uh, we get a window like this, or a menu like this, asking if we want to load in all the takes, so all the motion capture takes, no animation whatsoever, or a specific take. Uh, right now I'll just say to load in all the takes. So, we see right here we've got um, we've got Pepe in a model. We've got some motion capture data which is driving it. Here's the viewer which I'll come back to, but just as a quick uh, run around, this is your transport controls. In other words, fast forward, play, etc. So if we hit play, we get the models moving. It'll come to the end of its sequence and stop. We can play them in reverse. We can jump to the very first frame, we can jump to the very last frame. And we can also set it to rewind. Oh, sorry, to automatically rewind, basically to loop when it gets to the end. So if we hit play now, it should come to the end of the sequence, and loop. We can also change the frame rate that we're running at. Uh, because Motion Builder is built by Autodesk, which is an American company, by default it'll be running at 30 frames per second. We most likely will want to change that to PAL, which is 25 frames per second. Right, now if I just stop him while he's playing, <coughs> you'll see that um, the viewer, right now we're looking through a producer perspective camera. If we come up here to view, you see we've got a number of different types of cameras. So we've got perspective, but we've also got orthographic. And orthographic allows us to look directly straight on without any perspective distortion. And so we've got orthographic producer right. We've also got orthographic producer top, orthographic producer front, etc., etc. These will help you in lining up things um, later. But for the time being, if we go back to the perspective, We can also use a number of different um, controls. So if we hold down the Shift key and hit the left mouse button, you can see we can um, we can pan <coughs> uh, the viewport around. If we hold down Control and hit the left mouse button, we can zoom in and zoom out. And if we hold down Shift and hit the right mouse button, actually, if we just hit the right mouse button, you don't have to hit Shift at all. We rotate around. The center so this is zero zero this is the very center of the screen oh actually no you do have to hold down shift so if you hold down shift and uh, the right mouse button that allows you to move back and forth if you can't remember any of these you can do all the same things through these icons up here so if i hit the left mouse button and hit this left icon i can rotate around if i hit the left mouse button and this icon i can zoom in and zoom out Right. You'll notice that these are very, very responsive. Sometimes if you uh, move the mouse a little bit more than you thought you were, you can lose your, um, lose your entire scene. So if we come back 
down here under view to default camera view we can always recenter everything so now if I move the mouse much more slowly I can pan around I can also zoom in and zoom out this is a slightly confusing one let me put you back so this looks like a magnifying glass and you'd think it's for zoom in fact it's labeled zoom but what it's really doing if you watch down here when I click it it's changing the focal so it's changing the field of view so it's the equivalent of changing lenses that's important because if we start getting up around 23 degrees you'll notice we start to get some distortion um, you can't see it in this model but it's something to pay attention to so you may want to try to keep your field of view somewhere around 50 degrees and use the pan in pan out and we can also rotate from side to side right again so we'll come back here default camera view reset everything another important point if we rotate this is <clears throat> we can select different objects in the viewer uh, by left clicking and drawing a mouse around it uh, and dragging the mouse around it once we've done that if we come down here under view we can go to frame selected and you'll see we will zoom in so that's directly in the middle of the uh, of the viewer we could also come to frame all in which case we've got all the different elements which are viewed in the viewer some other elements some other items in the you uh, the ui which you may want to pay attention to down over here we've got the navigator and in the navigator we've got lots of important stuff there's not much actually in this scene right now but if we click on scene we can see we've got a mesh for Pepe we've got Pepe himself we've got Pepe's controller reference um, so Pepe has a character controller attached to it which I will cover in another um, tutorial we have Pepe's skeleton uh, we have camera interests and the skeleton of the motion capture data um, if we come back here to Pepe's skeleton, if I'm looking at this, I'm zooming with the um, uh, the ruler, uh, the middle mouse button. See, so right now I can see that I've got some controller, um, I've got some joints around Pepe, but I can't see the skeleton. If I go to display, go to X-ray, then I can see Pepe's full skeleton. If I just want to see the models without the skeleton at all, without the motion capture data that's driving it. I can toggle this to models. We'll go back to X-ray so I can see what's going on. Um, and we can change the visibility of things. Uh, we'll leave it as it is for the time being. But so if I wanted to move Pepe around, um, <clears throat> one of the other important icons uh, we have within 3D animation, uh, the 3D objects were essentially translating or rotating. So translation is movement. So if we want to move an object around, we translate it. And if we want to rotate it, we obviously rotate things. So if you leave your mouse over this, these icons here, you can see this is the translation and this is the rotation. This one is also a scale, which allows us to make things bigger or smaller. We'll come back to that later. But for the time being, these are the three most important. So translation, rotation, and scale. So if we want to move Pepe around, we use the translations. If we just try to click on something and select off Pepe, we may not be able to, yes. So you see right now, if we try to move, um, <coughs> I hope, hit control oops sorry control Z to undo that move so it may be a little bit confusing to try to figure out now how do I take this model of Pepe and move him someplace else on the stage without causing all this distortion hit control Z again to undo it to do that we take Pepe's root so this area right here which is um, either his control reference uh, which you can see in this case is not correct or his root. So we should be able to shift around. Let me try that again. So 
So go back here to Pepe. Pepe's control reference. Oops. There we go. We can slide him from side to side. We can raise him and lower him. So in this case, it was his root that I had to select. You may find that you have to try these different, um, either the control reference or the root, actually skeleton, uh, sorry, Pepe's control reference. Oh. So just try clicking one of these um, scene objects until you get something, until you find the one which is actually controlling this position. Again, so because I've raised and lowered him right now, looking in the producer view, it's very hard to see if I put him back down on the ground. But if I come over here to view and change to orthographic and then say producer right, I can find zoom in. Oops. Right here is zero zero. You can see that this is a bit lighter than the rest of the lines. So I'm going to take Pepe skeleton root, move it down, and position him directly on the ground. So now when I have him walk, he's walking directly on the ground plane and falling on the ground plane. You'll notice the motion capture data here is scaling differently when I move things around. Um, that's actually the real strength of Motion Builder. <clears throat> motion Builder allows you to take motion capture data and apply it to different models of different sizes and different shapes. So you'll see that Pepe doesn't have exactly the same number of bones, he doesn't have exactly the same number of joints as uh, the model which was used for this motion capture data. Um, you'll also notice that Pepe is approximately half the size of the human being which was captured in this. So Motion Builder is uh, converting all the movement, figuring out how much uh, movement there is between the knees, the ankles, the feet, etc mapping that onto Pepe's model, or Pepe's body, and distorting the motion uh, to allow us to use human motion capture data to drive non-human models, or to use motion capture data from people who are slightly taller, slightly shorter, etc., etc. So something to important to keep, uh, something important to watch is as this person is walking, see how far the original motion capture is traveling versus how far Pepe is traveling. And you can see the scaling which is going on behind the scenes with Motion Builder. Right. The other things to keep in mind or to, uh, to pay attention to on the interface, uh, the navigator you use quite a lot. And seeing if you've got lights, you'll be able to access the different lights through here. Um, poses, shaders, etc. will all be here underneath the navigator. Most likely when you start when you launch Motion Builder, um, the Asset Browser will open. Tutorials may or may not be open. Models, uh, previs, moves, etc. should all be there. So again, you can open these things by simply clicking on uh, the plus and left-clicking and dragging something into the scene. If we drag over here to open, it will open whatever I've pulled in here, but it will close uh, the models that are currently open. If I go to Merge, it will bring them into the model, uh, into the scene together with the existing models. So right now, if I just go to Open All Takes, don't save Pepe, but we've got a batter. And I can go look at him from perspective view. Right. And we will cover more in later tutorials. Hope that's all clear.